But me, Harry Weinberg, 77 years old, scribbling in a notebook like a schoolgirl. Why not? It passes the time. I sit for a few minutes thinking about my sister Frida, my mother, my father. May they all rest in peace. But it's strange. The one I really want to write to is Harvey. On November 27, 1978, the city of San Francisco stood silent, for that was the day Harvey Milk was assassinated. Harvey Milk was the first openly gay elected official. Though he is dead, his statements, ideas, and his meaning live on. Harry Weinberg is one of Harvey's close friends, but after Milk's death, he was devastated. So he joined writing class to pass the time. But when he's visited by his old friend and fellow Holocaust survivor, Izzy, it becomes more than just a way to pass the time. Through the class and the meetings along the way, he begins to remember his past, but also find peace with his future. A letter to Harvey Milk by Lucille Newman. Dear Harvey, I have to tell you something. The night you died, the whole city of San Francisco cried for you. 30,000 people marched the streets. I saw it on TV, each one with a candle, until the streets looked like the sky, lit up with a million stars. I remember thinking, Harvey must be so proud. But then I remembered, you were dead. And the tears ran down my face like rain. I've never cried like that in my life. But then, all of a sudden I got mad. I yelled at the people on TV. For getting shy and making me into a hero? You couldn't march when he was alive? But no. What good does getting mad do? It only makes my pressure go up. So I took a pill, and I calmed myself down. But then they made speeches for you. The same people who called you a schmuck when you were alive. And now you're dead and they're calling you a mensch. Harvey, a mensch with a heart of gold. You were too good for this rotten world. They just weren't ready for you. Love, Harry. Today, the teacher asked me to stay for a minute after class. Did I do something wrong? Maybe she didn't like my letter to Harvey. Who knows? I really liked the letter you wrote to Harvey. It was terrific, really. It even made me cry. You see, Harry, I'm, I'm gay, too. And there aren't many Jewish people your age that are so open-minded about it, at least that I know. So your letter gave me a lot of hope. Listen, Harry, I'm 30 years old and nobody in my family will talk to me because I'm gay. And it's all Harvey Milk's fault. He had such an impression on me, you know? When he died, he said, if a bullet enters my brain, then let it destroy every closet door. So when he died, I came out to everyone. I felt it was my duty. The problem is, my parents, they haven't spoken to me since I told them. Eight years ago. Why was she telling me all this? I'm just an old man after all. All this talk about the past. Harvey, what good does it do? This teacher and her crazy ideas. But still, it makes me think about Harvey more than anything. I remember inviting him to dinner one night. It's the only way to get him to sit still. I remember saying, listen Harvey, you gotta learn how to cook. When you get old, Nobody cares. Nobody's gonna do for you. You gotta learn to do it for yourself. I won't live past 50, Harry. I'm a politician, a gay politician. Someone's gonna take a shot at me. But that's a risk I gotta take. The way he said it. Chill, ran down my back like I'd never felt before. He was 47 at the 
a time. One year before he was shot. Today the teacher tells us she's going away for a couple of days. She tells us to write her a letter, a story called But I Never Told Anyone. She smiles at me, then turns to walk away, but but, but when she does, something on her back catches my eye. I see someone under her bag, an upside down pink triangle. I stop my track stunned. She think I'm blind as well as old. We're right, she'd have to walk in here with that, that thing to remind us what we've been through. Haven't we seen enough? You want stories? All right, I'll give her a story. This is what I never told anyone. One day, maybe seven, eight years ago, Izzy came knocking at my door. His face was white as a sheet. I was, I was walking down the street and I see a young man, maybe 25, bl black pants, a white shirt, and a shirt, he had a pink triangle. So, kids, we're all kinds of crazy things these days. Don't you understand? The case of wearing triangles, just like the war, just like in the camps, it looked exactly like Yussel. And to cry like I'd never seen before. So I put my arm around him and held him. And who was Yussel? Thirty years we'd been friends and had never heard of a Yussel. But still, I didn't know what to do. So I put my arm around him and I held him. And soon, his body got quiet, but his mouth got noisy. L listen, Harry, I. I was young at the camps when they took us away. Already I'd seen my mother, my father, my Hannah marched off to the ovens. Yussel was the only one I had to hold on to. One day during the selection, they, they pointed me to the right and the to the left. I went a little crazy. I ran after him and I dragged him back in line and I said, no, he stays with me. Why the guards didn't kill us then? No, nothing makes sense in that, that place. Yelsa and I slept together on a wooden bench. On this night, I was awake. It happened often in that place. But on this night, Yelsa was awake too. He whispered my name once and something broke in me. He began to cry. And then he put his arm around me and we cried together. But Harry, he began to kiss me, and I kissed him back. The warmth of his body was just too much for me. I already had seen Hannah killed, so what did it matter? To this day, I don't know how it happened, but somehow someone found out. It's just so I didn't come back to the barracks tonight. I went almost mad. The things that went through my mind, the things they could have done to him. On the third day, they lined us up after supper. And there, they had Yussel. His face was so swollen. His clothes were covered in blood. And on his shirt, they had a big triangle, twice as big as our yellow stars. They kept yelling at him, tell us who your friend is, or tell us we'll let you live. But he knew they'd kill us both. And then he looked up. And as if he said, Izzy, save yourself. And, and then he collapsed him. They shot him. He died for me, Harry. Izzy, come lie down, I told him. And I grabbed his hand. I led him to bed. I laid him down, then I laid down with him, and I held him until I stopped crying. He was my friend for 30 years. I would do anything for him. He passed on a couple months later. Maybe since he told someone his deepest secret, he could die in peace. Maybe not what I've told. I can die in peace too. And one more thing, teacher, between parents and children, it's not so easy, believe me. 
I know. But one father, one mother, it's all you got. But if you were my daughter, I'd be proud of you. Love.